The general public associates road crashes with fatal crashes and assumes all are caused by speeding. Policy therefore focuses on a small component of the overall issue. But what does this data look like up close? The men and women of the traffic department of the Jamaica Constabulary Force face the cold, hard facts of this data on a daily basis. There are quite a few incidents that stand out in my mind, but one in particular was on a morning about 7.30 along the Old Arbor main road. A vehicle was traveling along the, the roadway heading towards Old Arbor, that is a motor car, and a minibus was coming in the opposite direction. One of the ladies that was actually in the car that was unknown to me before the accident was one of my son's teacher and the minibus overtook a long line of traffic and crashed into the motor car, tearing off the entire right side. And the entire right side of my son's teacher's face was torn off. And I, was, I felt really very emotional about that. And uh, of course, my son was devastated. Some years ago, we got information that a tanker was descending the Golden Hill, Golden Spring Main Road and um, ran straight into a yard hitting down a pedestrian. We went there to investigate the matter and um, we found out that the driver was having a few drinks. We, we requested of him uh, a breath test. In a split second, the driver could not be found. We searched for him, still could not be found. And um, behind the house, we noticed that he had, he was there with his mouth full of grass. What we, what we found out is that um, he was eating the grass to hide the, um, the alcohol that was on his breath. He was breath tested and the, the level was very high. It exceeded 35 micrograms. He was arrested and charged for altering breath and um, convicted and fined. About 8.30 this morning, traffic was very heavy and uh, the line stopped at the intersection and a pedestrian was crossing the road. And instead of crossing the road normally, he was trying to cross the road under underneath the trailer. It's when the trailer moved off and drove a field when the trailer rocked. He was saying they didn't say anything on the road here. So people started to shout to him and he stopped. When he came out of the truck and looked, he was he said, I've seen this, this man dead. We got the trailers run over him and, and killed him. Victims of crashes that are seriously injured, requiring lifetime physical therapy and living aids, are left out of the consideration if victims only mean fatalities. Road crashes generate motor claims, and the serious crashes that we see in Jamaica generate particularly high claims for bodily injury. Now, of course, the way we cover high claims costs is to charge high premiums. As far as we can, we try and differentiate good risks, those are people who use the road carefully, from the careless and the dangerous. But inevitably, if the current levels of loss continue, motor insurance will become increasingly expensive for everybody. Sometime in 2003, Easter of 2003 to be exact, I met in an accident traveling to Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland. On reaching a ocean in St. Elizabeth, I fell asleep and ran off the road. Uh, I was taken to Mandeville Hospital where I spent one week there and transferred to Spanish Town. And uh, I spent two months in hospital at Spanish Town. Uh, suffering from broken a broken hip and uh, on coming out of hospital uh, I I've, I've been suffering from this injury 
on, on for, for for quite a while now and uh, even now I have not recovered fully from that that accident I still feel pain a lot of pain sometimes and uh, from like exerting it oh from er overly exertion of it I am um, I sometimes Mr. McLean is not alone Mr. McLean is not a statistic there are many more stories like this this is something we need to make sure in the analysis that we do not dehumanize the issue of road safety that each point each statistic is a story, is a life, and it's something that we need to take very seriously and consider as we move forward with these types of analyses and studies. When the responsibility of enforcing the law and keeping road users safe falls on your shoulders, one has little room for error. Senior Superintendent of Police, Radcliffe Lewis, knows this all too well. This gentleman with this truck here now is supposed to be on the left hand side of the road. Mackenzie's drive up and make him go in front of him and send him on the left hand side. That is. Yes. Drive on the left. Over there. Left lane you must use. Drive your left. Over there. Make him go on. We have some challenges. Take time, come on your left hand side. Red Hills Road. Right there, Hillary Avenue and Red Hills Road. That's where we're having the most problem in the morning. The taxis go around, come on that road, then come out, block off all the traffic. So what we are now doing, every morning, peak hour, there's a man stationed right there. And in the evening, same thing. Because of the, the volume of traffic. traffic. That, that sometimes come down and because this area is a little wider what they tend to do is to overtake and form two and three lanes right and um, that of course is careless so mitigate against them turn down the road here and turn back <laughs> that man they back actually in the road you know take him out man like how they are driving now that's how we expect them to drive, and that is how we want them to drive. You know, don't drive at breakneck speed. And when there's a problem, you don't have sufficient time to break up, to save a life, or to, or to save, or even to save your own life, or to prevent an accident. But there are times that the road is enticing, and there are times when they speed up. And most time when they speed up, that is the time that they get out of control, crash. 